I'm Richard Corrigan, and I'm going to be showing you my absolute classic from Bentley's Oyster Bar in Piccadilly, which is our legendary fish pie. I mean, we are going to make a few changes because we're doing family style service, and this is enough to feed six people handsomely. So, the fish pie mixture. Most, most importantly is the topping, is the potato topping. One kilo of potatoes, diced equal sized pieces, boiling salted water, cook, discard water when they're cooked, which I've done here. I put them on a low heat, lid on, just a little bit of steam to allow it to escape from the pot. Turn it down to, on my uh, electric hob, it's number six, and I'm just gonna let them dry out there for around five to eight minutes. I'm gonna make the fish pie sauce, which is absolutely delicious. A couple of little key points in the fish sauce uh, for the fish pie is I like to add maybe a tiny bit of anchovy, which is not in the recipe, and a tiny bit of smoked paprika at the very end. So I'm gonna start making that, which is 100 grams of butter. We melt that in there, and we have one onion, it uh, can be white, I could only get red, red, it is locked down. So that goes in as well, we get that nicely softened up. A little sprig of fresh thyme. And what you're basically making is a bechamel sauce. Foundation of all kitchen sauces, it's a white sauce and so easy to make. I have it on the electric uh, number seven on the hob. Uh, so just, there's no rush with this. So then onions have softened really nicely. And there's two cloves of garlic, which I've peeled and crushed. And in they go. And of course the next part now is add the flour, which we have here, which is sieved. And we just add it in. That's to make the roux base. Add in a little bit there. So, flour, butter, really well mixed together. Trying to make it as smooth as possible. And the next part is adding my two pints of milk, which adding a small little bit first and using the back of the spoon, getting it all in there, mixing it little by little. slowly now down and what I add now is magical touch is the English mustard two nice spoonfuls of that in there don't be mean be generous all in there the mustard and I'm going to take two anchovy fillets which is not in the recipe in they go with a tiny bit of the anchovy oil Fabulous flavor in there, fabulous. And I keep the skin of the haddock. And what I do is I add that in to the sauce. Why? The smokiness of that haddock flavor on the skin permeates in that sauce. And it just turns it with that English mustard and that anchovy into just deliciousness. I mean, if there's any sauce left over, you could always grate a little bit of cheese into it and make a kind of a smoked haddocky flavored rare bit with a few egg yolks in the sauce, yummy. So no waste whatsoever. And I let that cook out for around five minutes. I turned down the heat to electric number five, just to let it cook really slowly. We don't want that sauce catching on the pan anywhere. I'm going to put the sauce through the sieve, use the top of my pestle and mortar, all that beautiful yumminess. What you don't want is any fish scales or skin in the sauce. So that's why we put it through the sieve. I mean, with or without wine, the sauce is fantastic. But on this occasion, I decided to put the wine in my glass because it's just too good to put into the sauce. 
And of course, the last part of this sauce, the, the assembly is flat parsley, generous, mixed into the sauce. Nice and good and rich, beautiful, full of flavor. That smoked hala canchovi, delicious. And now, of course, it's just assembly, which is my pie dish, which I use this beautiful old battered crusade. I put a little bit of sauce onto the bottom first, spread that out. It's a one kilo fish mix, it's smoked haddock, it's fresh cod, it's organic farm salmon, and it's some South Atlantic prawns, which I'm very happy to use. So I make a checkerboard effect, cod, smoked haddock, you don't want anything in anywhere whatsoever, my salmon, tiny little bit of seasoning on the cod and the salmon, and then my last layer is my prawns, just add it. This would feed the family and the neighbors. And then the rest of the sauce. Fish pie now into the fridge for 10 minutes. I want that sauce to cool down. And now we make the mash, the mash topping. No fancy piping up the mash in this household, I'm afraid. Just a good mash means milk. I don't want to make a bit of cream and a little bit of butter in the end. I've added some milk and butter just to make it nice and smooth. And the final touch to this is I have two egg yolks, which I'm just going to add in. That's going to make my mashed potato delicious, rich, yummy. So, fish pie out as you're looking, the sauce nicely sets, and then we take our potato, so using the back of my spoon, put a little bit of decoration on, and then a nice little bit of salt crust on the top, then into the oven, 20 minutes, fish pie ready. When you see the sauce bubbling at the side, then you know it's well on the way. The fish pie, I'm just, after taking it from the oven, it's been in there for 20 minutes, and I'm just gonna literally sprinkle it with a few breadcrumbs. And of course, this is the chef's household. We have some old brioche here that I'm using. A little bit of the Parmigiano. It does make the most craziest, delicious top. Oh. Obscene, obscene. I think we can invite the street in for this feast and back in the oven. This dish has great memories of going down to Woodcock Smokery in West Cork to meet Sally Barnes, who is a fantastic smoker of wild fish, taking some of her great produce and turning it into a fish pie. So this has great memories, beautiful wild, wild fish, simply cooked, family style service, what more could you want?